The next operation is one that's really common and that gets a little bit tricky um, inside of Dynamo, and that's going to be filtering a list. So we have a list of things, and here are three different ways that we can filter that list. So for example, let's say we have we want to do or update a certain group of rooms. Um, we can filter that list by specific parameter values. So for an example, let's take our all uh, all by category group here. I'm going to plug that in and we're going to take elements. We've got to plug it in a couple places and I'll walk through that this this group is a little bit uh, more interesting. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to get the parameter value. So let's say we want to get these three rooms from our model. We want to get room 101, 110, and 120 because we want to do something specific to them. So I'm going to get the parameter value of all of the rooms. So we're, we have our get all by category. Let's move this guy down here. And then we're going to get the room number for them. So we're going to get parameter value by name, which we just learned about. So we're going to then also get the number from all of those guys. So let me give that a run and we can take a look. So essentially we're going to get a list of all of the room numbers. Now up here we have a code block and I've input the three numbers that I want, 101, 110, and 120. And then I'm using this node called list.create to group them into a list. So all that does is it takes three individual things, puts them in a bucket, and combines it. So once I've done that, I have two lists. So I have a list of all of the room numbers, and then I have a list of the three room numbers that I want. And I'm going to use this list.contains item, and this node is found, uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to use nodes in Revit, and then we're going to, this is in the core library, and this is under core list. So anything that has to do with a list, we're going to use right here. So list.contains, what it's going to do is it's going to com it's going to compare two lists and it's going to tell me whether or not one list can is, you know, the items in one list are contained in the list of another. And what this does is it returns a series of true false values. So I'm taking my list of three numbers, room numbers I want to check for, and then I'm taking them and I'm comparing all of the room numbers from our model to see if there's a match between what's in the list and what's not in the list. So I'm going to go through there and when I hover over it, it's giving me true or false. So let me just click down. So I can see right here, the first number that comes out of my model is 101. And this node list.contains item, it's doing the comparison. So it says true that my list of numbers I want contains uh, room number 101. And then I scroll down, there's a lot of false until we get to number 16, which is 120. So that is a true value. And I'm basically matching one list to the other. And that's all I'm doing is I'm getting this list of true false values. So once I have that, I then use this list filter by Boolean mask. And this threw me when I was first learning Dynamo, like how, what is this filter by Boolean mask? I don't understand. Um, what this will do is it's going to filter one list with the true false values in another list. So I'm using basically two lists that match up the elements. So I have the elements of all of the rooms and then I have a true false value whether or not that room matches 101, 110 or 120. And list filter by Boolean mask is going to separate out those two lists and it's going to separate them out to the things that match and the things that don't match. So this is how I do my filtering. So let's look at this in, in real life, if you will. I'm going to go and take my all elements of category. I've already plugged it into get parameter value by name, which is how we're getting the room numbers. Now I'm going to plug it into the top of my uh, list filter by Boolean mask. So I'm going to filter all of the rooms by I, my true false values that I generated in list contains item. So let me take my, where is my watch node? Just drag this guy over and I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to give this a run. And you'll see that there are actually two outputs, in and out. So in corresponds to the true values, out corresponds to the false values. So I'm going to give that a quick run. It's going to do its chugging. 
So now I look at my watch node and I filtered my list. So I'm getting then the three room elements here that match my room numbers. So now if I wanted to do something specific, for example, let's say we want to uh, set an instance parameter. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, I can take that, my little recipe here, and then I'm going to use the output of list filter by Boolean mask, and I'm going to plug it into my element right here. So let's change um, our comment value to say uh, this is a match. And I'm going to give that a run. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to disconnect this guy so we're not doing anything weird. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll make it run a little bit faster. OK, I'll give this a run. And that's going to do its thing. And we'll look quickly. I know we're running a little bit late on time, but um, hopefully we should be able to get through these other these other ones pretty quickly. So I looked at this. I ran it. I didn't get any errors, which is great. Let's switch over to Dynamo. And I'm going to take, sorry, to into Revit. And I know I had room 120. I should have picked rooms that were easier to find. OK, here's one vestibule. So if I look at that, I look at comments. Here it is. This is a match. And then if I could find 120 easily, I know I had 110 as well. But I, if I looked at those, I would also see that it updated those comments again, because I filtered the list specifically to look for those rooms. So let's look at the other couple ways we can do our filtering. Right down here, I can filter by a, num a numeric value. So in this case, we're doing something very similar. Let me grab my uh, group, oh, disconnect this guy, and then let me take my rooms here. So I'm going to connect my get all by category into this guy. And you see things start to get a little bit messy pretty quick. Let's see if I can clean this up. So I'm getting all of our rooms, and I want to filter by a particular parameter value. So in this case, I'm getting the area parameter, and I'm using a greater than or equals node. This is actually part of the operators library, which is right here. So if I want to check if something is equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, I have option, you know, I have access to all of these nodes here, um, which are really handy. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to get the area. I'm going to get the area of each room, and I'm checking for rooms where the area is greater than or equal to 250. And again, I'm going to use my filter by Boolean mask, so it's going to create two lists, one of rooms where the area is greater than or equal to 250, and one where the area is less than or equal, or less than 250. So I'm going to connect elements into get parameter value by name, and then I'm going to connect it also to filter by Boolean mask. I give this a run. And then I'll see that list of rooms right there. And I'm just going to hover over here. And you can see I get there's actually three rooms that have that area that's greater, and then a whole bunch of rooms that it's less. So this is actually kind of, I can play with this a little bit. I'm going to use a, let's go to core input. And I'm going to take a. Let's take an integer slider. So I, I mentioned this before, but I like this node a lot. I'm going to plug it in here. Instead of using my code block with the 250, I'm going to plug in the integer slider. So I can slide this value dynamically, if you will. So let's say I just slide it over to 75. I give this a run. So now it's going to get all of the rooms where the area is, you know, is greater than or equal to 75. And if we take a look here, my output, there's a lot more you know, rooms that meet that particular criteria. So I can also, again, I can either look for a particular you know, text-based uh, parameter value, or I can look for a numeric value as well. And it's a very similar thing where we're filtering and we're using this filter by Boolean mask. I can also, too, I added this one, filter by a category. So this is useful if I were to get all of the elements of a particular level, for example, or if I were to get all the elements in a particular view, then I could get that elements category. In this case, I'm going to use the equals node. So I'm going to say, give me a room category. And actually, let's do this. 
let's do this real quick. Um, let me go over to uh, get all in current view. So I'm going to copy that group and paste it. And I'm going to plug it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm getting all of the elements in the current view. Then I'm going to get the category using the element.category node. And then I convert this to an, a string. So I'm using the string from object. I played around with this a lot trying to get this to work. And I found that if I actually converted the category to a string, then it would actually it would work. So then it would do a correct comparison. So I'm specifying uh, the rooms category using the categories node. I'm getting all of the elements categories. I'm converting that category into a string. So I get the category name. I'm checking to see if they're equal. And then I'm doing our filter by Boolean mask. So let's give this a run. So this will give me all of the rooms in the current view. Hopefully, it should we should be good. And we're right at three. So I'm going to um, go through the next ones pretty quick. But hopefully this is giving you a sense of how you could use these recipes to kind of put things together and you know quickly create some scripts of your own. So yeah, we went through here. We filtered by the category. And you can see I have a whole bunch of rooms here. And then I have a whole bunch of elements that are not rooms. So it's grouped these. There's a lot of elements here, but it's grouped them um, by their category. So here are the rooms first in our in output. Essentially, this node, it outputs a, um, a list. It's a nested list. It's a list of lists. So list one is all the things that match. List two is all the things that don't match. And that's why you'll see it. Um, when you look at the output, I can actually click through this. And you'll see that the out, it outputs a list that contains a list and a list. And so I can go through each of these individually and see those elements.